Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to an exciting, exciting day. Exciting, exciting video. Hopefully you guys, uh, I know there's been a lot of anticipation about this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy the unboxing of the world's biggest diamond. Now let me preface this a little bit. Um, it's a little clickbaity, but uh, this is in fact the world's biggest diamond jet from Aviation Design. So if you came here expecting this kind of diamond, maybe just keep watching because it's a cool video, right? Um, anyways guys, my plane finally made it. I ordered this plane from Azario Customs in Canada. Um, I'll link to their website down below. And uh, it was a great experience ordering from them. The plane actually got shipped from Aviation Designs, which is in France. And uh, so long journey to get here and uh, really, really excited to unbox this. Worked at uh, our house build all day today. Again, there's a link down below if you guys haven't seen the house build videos and you're interested. Um, but worked at the house build all day today. Ran home or ran up to the FedEx Depot, picked this thing up, got it home, had to have a shower, had to eat something. It's been sitting in the garage for a couple hours now waiting to get to this point. So I'm excited. Very, very happy. If it's your first time finding my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the bell when you hit the subscribe button so you get notified when I release new videos. I'm gonna be doing a, vi a build video series on this plane. And also, don't forget to smash that like button and give the video a thumbs up. All right, guys, we got a little bit of damage on the box. I'll show you here. Um, I wasn't overly concerned with the ones I could see, but there is one that I couldn't see because they had it on the forklift. So we've got um, a, a punch hole right here. This is this would be on the side of the box when it's sitting flat. Um, I can feel some bubble wrap on the other side, but there's nothing hard through that hole, which is good. Hopefully. Uh, there's this one, which I also saw before they loaded it in my truck. But uh, same thing here. The outside is, um, is damaged, but there's like a cardboard layer on the inside. So that one should be fine. <clears throat> Nothing on that side. Now, the one that concerns me the most is this one, which was actually the bottom of the box. I didn't see it till I got home and unloaded it. Uh, when I put my hand in here, I can feel like a flat panel. If I had to guess, I'm guessing that might be the wing, but I'm not 100% sure. But bubble wrap's intact. Um, but it is a little bit soft when I push. So we'll see, fingers crossed, hopefully this works out and we don't have to deal with any damage. Um, that's really makes for a sucky, sucky day. All right guys, well, let's get into unboxing this plane. Now I'm not gonna tell you what color it is. You'll figure that out very, very soon. see anything from the top. I'm just going to put that big bin right there because yeah. Look at all this packing material we got. I love reusing this stuff. All right. Well, I think it's been given away. Can you see that? What color is it? Okay, let's start with the nose cone. It is their racing orange scheme. Ooh, dang, look at that. Awesome. There it is, guys. I went with the orange scheme. Very, very cool.
Give you a shot of the inside there. So it's a carbon band around the outside. Very, very nice. Okay guys, here's the, uh, the front nose section. So this is where the, uh, the gear gets mounted, uh, the batteries and everything get mounted. Great quality on this. Nice thick plywood, zero flex in this thing. Nice thick on the sides, it looks like quarter inch ply. And uh, we've got the horns for the wings and uh, some other things there, I don't know what it is. But there's the uh, front mount for the nose. All right guys, the way they pack this, I don't know if you can see over here, but there's, uh, <clears throat> looks like a really good packing job actually. One of the nice things about this, this plane is uh, it's such a small fuselage when it's dismantled. So the fuselage is on the, on the side here. And I'm not sure what's in that box, but obviously we'll get to that. So I'm quite meticulous, guys, about unboxing this kind of stuff, just because I don't want anything to go missing. Um, lots of bubble stuff on the bottom, it looks like, so that's great. Let's uh, open up the vertical. So I got number 75. I wasn't quite sure what number I would get, but uh, didn't request anything. I just let them do it. This is done in vinyl as well too, so it is possible to, uh, to take that stuff off, no problem. But uh, very, very cool, very nice. Nice and smooth, no imperfections in the paint so far. Looks great. Okay, we'll do the uh, elevators next. All right, I'll give you guys a little bit different perspective here so you can see what's actually going on in the box. Okay, elevator number one looks awesome. Very, very nice. Nice work, nothing wrong with that at all. Looks beautiful. <clears throat> Lots of glue around the, uh, the tube here. Um, maybe you guys can see it there. Yeah, lots of glue on the tube. Nice thick plywood as well too around the uh, around the perimeter here, where the uh, the servo um, cover screws go in. So that looks great, beautiful. One of the things I actually like about this plane is the um, the the decals and stuff are all vinyl, right? So you could take all that off, and this would just be an orange plane. Um, and I believe, yeah, this is all decals as well. So conceivably, you could just turn this into a completely orange plane. I, I like the decals, they look good, but if there's something you don't like, it's, it's easy enough to take off. So that's the uh, left elevator. Take a look at the right elevator. So again, looks great. Same thing, lots of glue in the uh, in the joint there. This one's actually quite a bit cleaner on the uh, on the wing joint. We'll do the fuselage last if we can. Okay, so yeah, the hole I, I found from the bottom side, I think, is going to be in the wing. Um, maybe, we'll see. Okay, we've got the tip tanks, or the wing tips. These things are insanely sharp. Obviously, I'll be covering all this, guys, but uh, 
one of the, the big struggles I'm going to have is molding lenses for these super sharp points on these, uh, these tip tanks because I want to put some Sky Candy landing lights on these things. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to accomplish that because you look at how sharp they are right there. And uh, yeah, they're pretty, uh, pretty crazy. So we'll have to see how that all works out. So that's the left tank. Beautiful. Awesome, just as nice. Beautiful, nice and solid too. The uh, the fiberglass carbon layup, whatever it is, is uh, is nice and solid. Nice solid rods there to uh, connect the uh, the pieces. All right, guys, wing time. I'm a little worried about the bottom wing, so I'm actually going to take this top wing out or middle wing, uh, which is the left wing first. Gonna set that aside and we'll take a look at this guy. Oh, you know what? The uh, soft area, I guess, was underneath the fuselage. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. Okay, let's unpack this and take a look at it. Looks awesome. Nice work. It's got a nice molded joint on the bottom or molded edge on the bottom so it's going to tuck into the, uh, the fuselage. Massive flaps on these planes. And there's a shot of the underside. Looks really, really good. Nice carbon in there. You can see the entire top of the wing here is all... There's a carbon band that actually runs down on the other side, but runs down there. Looks really good. Really, really nice. Let's take a look at wing number two. All right, wing number two. So this is the left wing. Very, very nice. All right, so we have a little bit of damage here on the underside of the wing. So there's a couple little little chips right there. I don't suspect that that was a shipping thing. And I, the reason I say that is because this wing was actually sitting, uh, this was the top wing kind of in the middle of the box. So you never know, but uh, that's fine, not a big deal. I'm okay with that kind of stuff. It's just if you have any structural issues that I'm uh, not overly excited about. Okay, good looking wing. All right guys, so we've got a couple other things here. So we're gonna take this big box out. That should be where the gear is and the tanks and stuff like that. So let's open this guy up and see what's in there. Okay, so we've got a bunch of packing material. Okay, so with this kit, I ordered the aluminum um, servo door covers. So those are in there. We only got a bag of hardware, that type of stuff. So that's the uh, hardware package. 
We got our tanks here. So these are the tanks. You have to order these separate, but that's the uh, the standard tanks. Looks like it comes with uh, the little centered clunks. So anyways, I'm sure that'll be covered in the manual. If not, we'll figure that out, but that's the standard tanks. I think that works out to be five liters for those, uh, those two tanks. All right, and then we've got, this is probably the retract set. So the retract I ordered for the kit were the Biotech set and they're the electric Biotech set. So exact same set I've got on my Tudor and looks like very similar size wheels. So we've got, I think probably a four inch wheel there. Roughly a three for the front. got here all the other stuff that goes along with it so the retracts the legs all the hardware that goes with it and then we've got all the stuff so we've got our data cable those are the brake setup so that's the electronic brakes in there we've got all of our hubs and then we've got our controller and uh, wiring and that kind of stuff so my current Biotech setup uh, I think uses a little bit different terminal but anyways that's uh, the terminal that comes with this guy and then this is the the actual brake controller there, or sorry, re retract controller, so. Anyways guys, I'm not gonna get into this stuff. I'm going to get into that when I actually get to that part of the build. All right guys, so getting into the part that I am the most stressed about is the fuselage. And the reason I say that is the damage on the bottom of the box um, is, right here which actually might be an okay thing because that's right on the canopy so hopefully we got lucky let's find out oh we got wing tubes i don't pack those And that's one of the reasons I'm so meticulous with uh, with taking all the bubble wrap out and looking through stuff is because obviously you want to make sure you don't miss anything, right? So this would be the side that is exposed to the box being damaged. And you know what? That looks perfect. That is awesome. Wow, that is beautiful. Just share this with you guys. Um, I really like this canopy. I like that it comes pre-finished like that in black. And if you wanted to cut the uh, the canopy out and put a clear one in there, you could. And it's actually got a really nice scribe line and everything. But uh, that is awesome. Cool. All right, guys, and there is the fuselage. Wow. Yeah, you know what? The only damage it got from that I could see is there's the carbon decal here. It has just a little bit of a nick. 
but everything else looks fine. Wow, we got really lucky with that. Really lucky. Cool, well, well guys, I'm gonna pull this out of the box, get the box set aside, get my table in place, and then we'll start uh, kind of piecing this thing together and having a little bit of fun with it, getting her put together. All right guys, we'll take a look through everything here. I love how flat the bottom of the fuselage is. It's like a F-18 or F-15. There's just so much area there. Um, so you can see the uh, the nose section here is all boxed in, which is super cool. So you don't have any, uh, any air going inside the fuselage from the front gear. So that's nice, like that. There's a couple indirect paths from uh, the nose area. So air could go up this way around and through the, uh, the nose. Again, I love how, I actually really like how all of the um, finishing on the plane is done in vinyl. So this plane is basically painted one color in the orange. And uh, I'm assuming that helps to keep things fairly light as well. And then everything else is just put on, which is nice because I don't fly with Futaba, I fly with JR. Uh, this is gonna have a King Tech in it. And uh, you know, the the Jet Cat stickers here, there's a uh, Bayotech sticker on the wing, which actually isn't bad because you've got the Bayotech gear going in the plane. We'll pull the hatch off here. So nice, solid fit. Now on some of the earlier kits, um, this actually wasn't cut out and uh, needed to be cut out by the builder. So that's already done. The cheater holes, I guess. I'm gonna put some of the, my, my black screen over top of this and that'll help to, uh, to stiffen it up a little bit. But uh, they've also got carbon laid in here. <clears throat> There's carbon underneath the uh, plate there and that's all the way into the front of the fuselage. So just tons of room in this area as well too to put equipment and things. And then the pipe, pipe that comes with the kit is the Gramania uh, pipe, specifically for this plane, and it comes already installed. Um, so obviously I'm gonna take this out, check it, where you have to treat all the formers and everything like that, but uh, very, very nice, slick setup. So this is the, uh, the vertical for the, uh, the rudder, um, just a standard aluminum tube, which is fine. Uh, this is the uh, tube for the elevators. So that's a carbon tube, similar thickness to the, uh, the uh, tube for the, well, actually it's quite a bit thicker. Anyways, that, that's the elevator tube, so nice and stiff. Now with the wing tubes here, we actually have two different wing tubes. So we've got a um, thinner diameter aluminum wing tube, which is the same thickness as the rudder one. Um, so that's awesome, nice and strong. And then we've got this wing tube, which actually still aluminum, but it's a heck of a lot heftier. And this is gonna be the front wing tube because it's a larger diameter right there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really beefy compared to this one. Like you're probably 50% more weight or more, so. Um, that's cool. I, I just thought that was kind of a unique little, uh, little thing there. I'll show you guys this. Okay, so... Got a nice fit there, and the uh, the wing has that nice angle at the bottom to follow everything. Okay, 
So with any new plane, there's a bit of a learning curve. The reason I say that is because the angles, like these wings have a funny angle to them. So it's just figuring out how, uh, how it all jives together. But it is an absolutely awesome fit. Nice and snug. There we go. Let's put the tip tanks on. something off. Man, with all the angles on this thing, it's uh, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. What I mean by that is you're putting the rudder on and the, the tube and the little pin that goes in the front has such a steep angle on it that uh, everything has to just line up perfectly. Uh, they did a great job. So, okay, I'll put the elevators together. For that, we need carbon tube. the other elevator on. Now these elevators don't have any pins in them so um, I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on the leading edge. Man this thing's big. They always look big when you have them in the garage. But it's a big plane. There we go. Nice snug fit on that. I uh, was just being careful just to make sure I got it in the right spot. That looks beautiful. So just the nose by itself, I think is about three feet long. Let's measure it. All right, so just the nose is 33 inches long and three feet is 36 inches. So almost three feet on the nose. That's wild. So right now we've got like a, how big is this plane? And it's deceiving, right? Because you've got the, the tailpipe here, but the... So the rear of the plane actually sticks out another... Uh, 18 inches from the tailpipe. Yeah, so with, uh, with the nose on, you're at 11 feet for the total distance. And there she is, guys. You gotta stand pretty far back to get this thing in picture. Holy crap, is that ever big? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, guys, just some closing remarks on the Aviation Design Diamond. Uh, some people are like, why the heck would you buy such an ugly plane? Honestly, I love the look of this plane. I think the first time I saw it was in one of the um, Jet International magazines. I believe it came out in like 2014, 2015. When I saw it, I like fell in love with the just the shape and the design of it. Um, so 
I, I guess that's part of the first reason why I got this plane um, is I've always wanted one for a long time. And uh, actually would have been, I think two or three years ago, I almost bought one of these, but uh, I just held off and um, it's probably fine because I'm, I'm happy that I, I waited and it's cool that we have one of these now. So um, love the plane. Other thing with my planes, just a, a little tidbit for you is I don't like having planes that I don't fly. That's why I, I sold the F-18, got this plane. I love flying the F-18. The problem is that I can't fly it on a grass runway unless I got a bigger engine. So uh, this year with COVID and everything, I wasn't able to fly the F-18 once. And that, that makes me sad ultimately. So I'm happy that I sold it, happy that we got this monster and uh, really looking forward to flying this. And the other thing I, I've mentioned before is I like having planes that not everybody has. So to my knowledge, this is probably one of the only, if not the only uh, diamond in Western Canada. I don't know of any other ones. I know in Eastern Canada, there is some. Um, so not a very popular plane, very unique. You know, my other planes, the Tudor, not many people have a Tudor. Um, the, the Ultra Flash, yeah, lots of people have Ultra Flashes and I think I'll always have one of those in my, uh, in my stable of planes, so. Anyways, guys, I'm very, very happy with the way that this plane showed up and turned out. Uh, I mean, that's always a risk you take when you have something shipped from overseas, right? Um, shipping on this plane, I'll, I'll tell you what it was. It was absolutely astronomical. Um, they recommended shipping it by FedEx, uh, Air, and the shipping was $1,225 Canadian to ship this plane. So absolutely mental on the shipping but it showed up safe. They shipped it on Monday, no, Tuesday, and it's Friday today. It was actually in Calgary yesterday on Thursday. So got here really quick. Plane is is all in near perfect shape other than those little nicks on the underside of one of the wings. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Okay guys, so we've got another project to work on. We actually have two right now. So we've got the, uh, the upgrades that we're waiting for for the, um, the Excalibur that we did the engine install for, and we've got the Diamond. So this will be the next project on the docket to complete. Uh, of course, I'll be uh, doing build videos on the entire thing. And uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, make sure you list them down below. And just a shout out to you guys, you, uh, you faithful watchers of the channel, you subscribers of the channel. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching my content. Honestly, I do. Um, I love doing these build videos and things like that. I love, uh, I, I really enjoy building model aircraft and uh, I like being able to video it and share it with you guys. So thanks so much for tuning in guys. Um, we'll see you in the next video for, uh, for building this plane.